Hey everybody, this is Pat and Heidi from Rain Country. And yeah, we get uh, asked questions all the time and sometimes we might be remiss in answering them. We answer most of the questions that we come across. I think we answer pretty, are pretty good about that. Mm, pretty but good. there are questions that other people might be interested in, might not be. <laughs> but we thought we'd give this a try. Let us know what you think about uh, this Q&A. Um, mm. We're going to try to do it at least bi-monthly and see. Yeah, if, see how things go. Maybe every other Saturday. If people are not interested in it, just let us know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the questions that I have or I've been asked you know frequently is how long have I been woodworking well all my life I can remember as a little boy in the backyard getting um, old drawn old nails out of old boards and and straightening them out and building uh, different things in the backyard, um, growing up, we had the self-reliant uh, mentality of growing our own meat and vegetables, producing our own stuff. So, in the backyard, there's always boneyards, <laughs> and I had boneyards of the boneyards, which was uh, old rotten pieces of wood and and old uh, fence boards that had old nails in it and stuff like that. And so, I'd build forts and. I'd build uh, go-karts and take them over there to the hill and run them down our paved street that we were close by. And most of the times, the uh, the <laughs> most of the times the little go-karts would fall apart just because it was made out of junk anyway. <laughs> but I had fun, and it was actually a good learning experience as to see how the mechanics of things worked. And he still um, has boneyards. I have lots of boneyards. <laughs> Yeah. That's why we need more property, honey. <laughs> Coming up in school, I would think of every opportunity and any opportunity to take wood shop and metal shop and art and and uh, things like that. So um, all my life, I've had a desire to be self-reliant and pursue the skills that were involved with that type of a lifestyle. So woodworking, metalworking, stuff like that. Didn't you I make little catapults? Oh yeah, I used to, you know, in my room I would build little carvings of catapults and s split little pieces of cedar and make outhouses and I don't know, I'd build I all kinds of stuff. I took, took the catapults to school and used them to launch <laughs> spit wads or whatever. Oh yeah, I used to make little rolling uh, catapults um, <laughs> out of springs and stuff like that and anyway. Um, I try to make them as real looking as possible, you know, I'd hone the logs out and make chainsaws. I remember that little outhouse when I met you, you still had that little outhouse. I, I guess wonder what happened. I still have that. Where is it? I think I got it stored away in the room somewhere. It's really cute. We, <laughs> I should find it and show it at some point because it's really cute. You know, he had it when I met him. That, uh, yeah, I did, you know, I used to love carving, carving all kinds of things, um, you name it, I tried it. Um, I used to make little, uh, any of my teachers watching out there, I used to make little slingshots and sell them at school. <laughs> you know, okay guys, you all know this, you know, you take the pieces of paper and wad them up real tight and fold them into a V and then put them in the um, rubber tubing, you know. I used to make them and sell yeah. them. That's so <laughs> I don't think I sell a whole lot of them, but anyway. I had a bunch confiscated. <laughs> anyway, uh, you got another one, Mrs. Rain? <laughs> Let's move on to the next gonna subject. Go. We're going we're gonna to take turns. So, um, one of the questions I get asked frequently is, and this is going to sound, uh, this is going to sound wrong, but I get people that ask me, how do I know so much? Which always makes me feel kind of, it, it surprises me because I don't feel like I know that much. But, what I do know, like when it comes to herbs and health, I'm not, I say this frequently because I want people to understand this. It's, just, it's really important. I do not have a degree in, any, in anything, really. I don't have any, any kind of certificate as far as uh, studying you know, medicinal herbs or being a nutritionist. 
how I know so much, quote unquote, which I feel like I'm just scratching the surface, is simply by, um, a lot of it's just learning as I go and finding what works for us. And then, so like I get people that ask me specifically, you know, how do I cure bronchitis or how do I cure this? Well, I don't know those, the answers to those questions. So I really don't know so much because these aren't issues we personally have had to deal with. So if it's something I personally have had to deal with, then I'm usually researching it. Or if it's someone close that, you know, a, a family, a relative or a, a family friend that um, is needing help, then I will dig in and research and try to find the best things I can to help this person overcome whatever it is that they're dealing with. And that's how I learn. And I actually do plan on doing a video soon on how you can um, research these things for yourself, the best types of web websites to look for, how to find them, and so on. So be watching for that down the road. But really, that's it. You know, I have I have hard copy books on medicinal herbs, on uh, medical care, and and then again, a lot of it is just experience and. Yeah, and finding what works for me, what works for Mr. Rain, and the things that work for me don't always work for him, such as the pain relief. And, you know, again, it's just, it's just doing it. It's the same way that I do my gardening. How do I know what I, I still have tons and tons and tons to learn from gardening. I'm no Danny King. But when <laughs> I know what I know here, based on my own personal experience, trial and error, and just throwing stuff in the dirt and see what's gonna grow best where. That's, that's how I know what I know about those things. Isn't it interesting um, that <clears throat> before colleges and everything was about, how did anybody learn anything? <laughs> hey, I don't have a degree. I'm not a doctor, you know. It's like, uh, really good okay, point. well, let's just discredit everything you say because you don't have this piece of paper hanging All on the right. wall that's been backed by Big Pharma. Okay, next question. Well, and let me throw one more thing, just in general, about the piece of paper on the wall. That is a great thing to have. I'm not going. I'm oh, not yeah. going to put down having Education a diploma a good thing. certificate, but. When you really think about it, all that piece of paper says is that person crammed well enough to pass their exams. And was taught by somebody that has an somebody opinion. Somebody that had an opinion. So, just some things to consider. But anyway, so it's your turn again. What did so I write down? You're about the moving. Are we moving? Ah, yes. <clears throat> We've put out a couple of videos. It's been well received. Uh, one of those videos is... Um, Things to consider when looking for a homestead property. And the other one was best places to homestead, and, and we were places, putting it out as a question. Best places to homestead. Right now, me and Mrs. Rain are in the process of doing all of the research involved with making a move. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to move. We're just counting the costs right now. We're going to know more uh, this year. Um, we don't do anything like that, just, just up and do it. Yeah. We, you know, we're old enough now where we have to calculate our moves and consider all the costs involved. We, you know, we have, we have kids, we have, we're well grown established. Grown children, we should say, our grown kids. Yeah, we're well established here, so the kids have some roots here. Um, we're well established where we're at financially. Um, you we're know, we're not rolling free. in the door, door, but what I'm saying is that we're set up, you know, the house is paid off and all these different things. So we're set up in such a way that, you know, we're getting by. <laughs> so any, any upheaval or any move to uh, back east or something like that would uh, definitely be a great upheaval not just financially but also with the family and also with uh you know the physical attributes uh, involved with that so uh in response yeah. to that question are we going to move and where are we going to move um that is that data is still being collected maybe and we don't know <laughs> there we go. There's the answer. so we're, we're still collecting data 
We're still counting the cost. Mm -hmm. There are still a, a, a few things that actually have to come to fruition before yes. we actually. We're really in a holding pattern. Make that. For several reasons. Bef yeah. yeah, before we make that actual plunge into, you know, buying, you know, a thousand acres and a full yeah. functioning ranch. <laughs> yeah, and it's all that sound, stuff sounds so dreamy and wonderful, mm -hmm. and yet at the same time, there's something very fun and exciting too about taking our little third acre and seeing how much more we can do with it. We've had people tell us, you do more on your little third acre than some people do with several acres of land, which is right. really, you know, that's, we really appreciate that. I would have never seen it that way myself, but but that's pretty cool. But, and I plan on doing more. I'm still expanding my gardens mm -hmm. and still working with my soil and still working with different vegetables and things and finding out what does best right here. And it's, it's been a fun challenge. And, yeah, there's more to do. I mean, but it would be nice to have a lot more, more property. A little bit more infrastructure to kind of put into place. Um, I want to basically box in the garden area in order to more, you know, regulate the warmth and different things like that to extend out our growing season and to keep the chickens out. But you have to also understand that we're in such a small area that every plan that we do well, actually, there's a financial thing in, in, it, in it as well, but everything that you do will affect other things around it. So we have to carefully calculate where to put things. It's like the solar panels. It's like working a puzzle. I have the solar panels mounted on the shop. Um, they're they're not affecting any aesthetics. They're not affecting any more land. Um, I got six more panels to install. Hopefully, I get to that this year. Um, but where exactly do I put those that I don't shade the garden and then I, I don't encroach on any other infrastructure that's here. So um, a lot of, lot of different planning uh, strategies that have to yeah, go that are involved with a smaller piece of property. But anyway, that's kind of where we're at on the moving. Um, yes, we hope to, but not anytime real soon. So we, we uh, yeah. So, so just keep praying for us as we Absolutely. ponder and wait and and figure out where the Lord's leading us mm -hmm. on that. But all right, the last question we're trying to do two each, even though we kind of interject. <laughs> but is this one's pretty simple? Is I've had people ask me what uh, what martial arts I've studied, and that is I have black belts in in Taekwondo and in Wu Wei Gung Fu. And I actually didn't start studying martial arts until I was in my 30s. And I got to do that right along with my boys, which is pretty cool. And they also have black belts. And the Wu Wei is very interesting because our Sifu, uh, Joseph Cowles, who passed away just a few years ago, he, a uh, very sweet man, he actually studied under Bruce Lee when he was up here in Seattle and um, has some, had some really amazing stories about their friendship and, and the time that he spent with him. And he actually still had, clear up until he passed away, still had, uh, would get letters from yeah. Linda Lee, mm -hmm. yeah, which was really neat. And anyway, we, he worked with us right here in this very room that we're sitting in. And my oldest son and I, we earned our black sash under him. So you can look up Joseph Cowles and Wu Wei Gung Fu and learn quite a bit about that because it is based off Bruce Lee's tap roots. And so, and I've said this before, this makes us second generation, second generation Bruce Lee students because our, our instructor, he was 83 or 84 when he passed away, was a former student of Bruce Lee. And so that's... That's where my background is in martial arts. And so I just have, you know, Joseph Cowles was just a really neat person. And anyone who ever got to meet him in person would probably have been amazed at this man because he was, he was not a very big man. He was actually rather short and, and very, he was just very small. And he was in his 80s when he was teaching us. And he was... Uh, this is where size doesn't There matter. was a lot of stuff he, he couldn't do at his age. Like he, he taught us how to take falls and stuff, but he never showed it, showed us. But 
it still didn't, it, if you were to try to grab him, he could take you down in a heartbeat. It's just like that. In fact, the one really cool story I like to share is when we went and visited him in the hospital just before he passed away. You know, he was so weak and pale, yet he still had not lost his sense of humor. And he tells Patrick, he says, Patrick, come here. <laughs> And, and so Pat goes over there, he goes, so what did he say something like, if she, if she starts to get too hard to handle, here's what you do. And he's trying to... <laughs> he's show, showing me a, show me a, a, a hand move, you know, a, you know where you like, can, yeah, I can control move. her, you know, with a little bit of effort, you know, so uh, uh, it, he's it a was, real cool guy. He was very neat, real so humble. we miss him. Yeah. But anyway, so I guess that's our Q&A for today. And again, uh, let us know what you think about this. And maybe we'll try to do it at least twice a month, maybe even weekly, if we get enough questions. So that might be the easiest way, actually, for us to answer questions and be able to answer them all and get it all out there. So anyway. Be careful what you ask for, Mrs. Ooh, Ray. Ooh, scary. <laughs> it doesn't mean we'll answer every question. So anyway. OK. Is that it? That's it. OK. Well, thanks for putting up with us. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. Take care. And God bless.